All right, welcome back. My name is Ryan, and today I just want to make a short progress update on the home office. Uh, so in previous videos, I made the desk that floats in the alcove there in the wall. Uh, we also mounted the three monitors and ran the cables through the wall, which was kind of cool. Um, and I told you guys that I had a, a ton of plans for this office and things that I want to do and kind of make it into my YouTube studio makerspace type of thing. And you guys flooded the comments with all kinds of different ideas and things that we, you guys would do. And I just wanted to give you an update of where I've made it since that time. Um, show you guys what I have, show you all the products that I use. I'll link them down in the description below in case you like any of them. But more than anything, I want your feedback and see kind of your ideas on what you would do next. So I hope you guys stick around and I'll show you what I have so far. And then we can see where we go from there. All right, for this one, I really felt like I had to start off from zero again. If you've watched any of my two other videos that took place in my office, um, it was painted a yellow-ish color. Uh, there was a bunch of cedar trim, which I'm not against cedar, uh, but it really doesn't have anything going on with the rest of the house. The rest of the house has this white and neutral paint color look, and that's kind of what we were going for. Um, also, this is down in my basement, and there are no windows down here, so we needed a lot of light, and we wanted to make it light and bright. So the first thing that I did, and I didn't really do this on camera because I didn't figure you guys wanted to see me paint walls, but I tore down all the trim, uh, repainted all the walls. One of the biggest things that I did was the closet behind me. I reframed it uh, to make it a traditional closet size. Uh, before, it was a, a, a kind of a narrow walk-in, and then you had shelves on the inside on either side. Now it's a traditional 72-inch wide closet, which is a pretty big pretty big closet, uh, plenty of space for me to put all my stuff. That might end up being another video for another day where I build a custom closet organizer. I don't even know if that's something you guys would want to watch, but I guess you can let me know in the comments. But at any rate, went through, repainted all the walls. Uh, the gray, the light gray color that you're seeing is called dolphin gray. And then the darker color is what they call carbonized. So it's not quite black, but it's a carbonized dark gray color, which I think looks really nice. Um, but yeah, so this, starting off from zero, this is where we, we came to now. Uh, all the walls are painted, all the trims done, all the doors have been painted, closets redone, and that really starts the groundwork for what the office is really going to become later. Alright, so once the paint and trim was taken care of, the next thing that I needed to tackle was lighting. Uh, this office, like I said before, is down in a basement. Uh, so there's no natural light, there's no windows, and the only thing that I had supplying light was five can lights that were in the ceiling. Um, how it was before was I had one single switch over here on the left side of the room that controlled all five can lights. What I went ahead and did was I split those up into two zones. So we left this switch, um, and I actually installed a dimmer switch over here, but now this switch only controls these back three lights, and I wired in this new switch, that controls these front two lights. So it's really kind of nice because I can operate these as two different zones. I can turn the back lights off and just have the front lights um, for the, for the, that are over top of the computer. I can turn those off and have these on. I can dim these down so that you have a combination of light and it's working out really nice so far. To get the lighting right in here, I wanted to make sure that I had enough light. Uh, the way that I did that was the three bulbs that are connected to the old switch on the back wall I changed those out with these Sunco BR40s. Uh, these are a 5,000 Kelvin LED light that put out 1,400 lumens each. So with three of these in this small space, we've got plenty of light. Like right now when I'm filming something, I have them turned all the way up and we have plenty of light. But since they're on their own switch, they can be completely turned off or I can dim them down to whatever light we need. Then when we're looking at the lights that are over top of the computer back here, I went with something like a Philips Hue. Uh, and these are a BR30 because they don't make a BR40, uh, but these go the full color gamut from 2000 all the way up to 65 Kelvin, and that's the white, so it's a kind of a yellowish color all the way up to the, the really bright, cool white colors. And then it says it does 16 million colors, which any color under the sun, these things will do. Uh, the only downside of these, well, they're, they're kind of two. Number one, they're kind of expensive. Uh, and number two, they only put out 650 lumens. But where they're located up here, I'm not really concerned about how much light they can put out, just more or less the color and having a little bit of downlight. Most of the light that comes from this room comes from the other lights that I just talked about. 
Then the other form of light that I have in here uh, comes underneath my monitors and then underneath the desk. I have two lights underneath my monitors and two lights underneath my desk, and those are the Philips Hue play bars. Uh, these will do the full white spectrum 2 to 6500K, and then it'll also do all the same colors as the previous lights. Uh, these are really awesome because they all hook into the same app, so they all work together. So the two lights under here, the two lights under the monitor, and the two lights up top, I have all configured in this room and in the same zone. So we can do some really cool stuff from the settings on the app. We can turn them all on, turn them all off, we can dim them, we can change them to different colors. They have all kinds of different preset color combinations where you can go any different color under the sun. Uh, they have ones that set them to all different colors to have different themes. It's, it's a really cool system that Philips has. Uh, yes, it is a little bit more expensive, uh, but from a person perspective, my perspective, um, I really rather have something that works 100% of the time and I have had no issues with these so far. Uh, you can go into the app, turn them off, turn them on. They all work together. I don't have six different types of lights where I'm looking at six different apps and I'm trying to get things all configured. So I really like the way the lighting's working in the space. I'm sure there's other, other options out there that'll work. Um, and I'm sure that you guys know of some. And if you want to leave them down in the comments, that's awesome. But really, I do suggest Philips Hue if, you're, if you can spend the extra money so far they've worked really well for me. All right, now we're down here underneath the desk and you can see we're still dealing with some unique lighting scenarios. Uh, I was talking about in a previous video that I was building a new PC and this is what I came up with. Uh, a few students at school helped me spec it out and one kid even got me my, my graphics card, which was really cool. Uh, but this is kind of the final product and, and I don't think I'll leave the lights like this forever. Even though the kids are telling me RGB equals FPS, um, it, for my standards, it'll probably go to a solid color or, or just a few colors. But I will admit, the RGB in here looks really cool. And for all my needs, this computer is doing awesome. I will list the specifics of what's in this computer in the description below. Uh, just so if you're building a computer, or you're looking at something, or you like what you see here, uh, you can look at what I used and, and gauge that you know, for yourself. And with this computer, I wouldn't say that this is a budget build, but it's not the, the crazy most expensive computer ever either. But I really do like the way that it looks, and I chose a case that's glass so that we can see the pieces inside, because I'm a person that likes to see the way things work, and I definitely like the lights that are in here too. So I needed a way to hide this computer and keep it out of the way, but also display it and show it off at the same time. So I think a really cool way of doing that was to hang it from the desk above. Uh, so you can see there's nothing under here touching the floor. Uh, it's not a shelf on a shelf that's hanging from the thing. Uh, there are lag bolts that are in the top of the, the computer case. There was a frame in the top of the computer case, an inner frame, that I was able to put lag bolts in. I was able to cut slots in the top of the, the sliding tray that goes over top of it, and then the lag bolts came up through. I mounted some hooks on the other underneath side of my desk, and then this hangs from the... From the uh, from the underside of my desk, which is really, really cool. It stays out of the way, but it's still visible enough where you can see something. And, I, and I'm, really, I'm really liking the way that this setup works. And the other thing that it does is it really lends into my cable management. So speaking of cable management, now that we're down underneath the desk here, you can see how I have all these cables run. Uh, the way that I built the desk really lends to cable management in the fact that we can just run all the cables through holes in the support pieces of the desk. Uh, I also have these little clips that are up here that have the cables kind of bundled together and tied together. Is It's not the most neat thing or organized thing I've ever seen in the world, but it does a really good job of holding them and keeping them up out of the way. Um, in a previous video, I wired up a outlet under here so that I could have two surge protectors that are all kind of supported under here so that we didn't have to use this outlet and you could see a cord there. Um, I have my pass-through, cable pass-through, that runs all my monitor or wires from my monitors down to my computer, which ended up working out really nice. Uh, this is my speaker cable. Uh, drilled two holes in either side of the desk right behind the speakers, and that connects the speakers over to the computer and to each other. And while we're down here, you can see the two Philips Hue play bars that are pointing down towards the ground here, kind of illuminating this area. So I'm really pleased with the cable management and keeping all this stuff out of the way. And the big thing is you can't see any of the cables or any of the wires for any of this stuff uh, from you know up there when you're just walking around or actually using the computer. 
This is actually an idea that I got from multiple different people on YouTube, and I thought it was really cool. These are all extenders of different things that I would plug into my computer. So I have my headphones and my microphone jack right here if I wanted to use it. I have USBs, and then also different things for different storage devices like SD cards or micro SD cards. So really, whatever I need to plug into my computer, I can do right here, and it's located really conveniently next to where I'm sitting rather than trying to get around to the back of the computer or even using the ones on the front of the computer that are farther away from me. All right, next, one of the most important things you've got to have in every good office setup is a quality office chair. Um, for me, this took a lot of time to pick out. I scoured Amazon, I scoured a bunch of other stores, and you can spend about as much money as you want on an office chair. Uh, but really, at the end of the day, I wanna buy the best quality product that I could for the amount of money that I wanted to spend. Uh, so when this one went on sale, I think it was under $200. Uh, that was kind of the one for me. And what this is, is this is the Autonomous Mayo Chair. Uh, this thing is, it's got a really cool kind of modern look to it. Uh, I really liked that it has the adjustable armrests. So the armrests do go up and down and they have multiple different locking places where it can hold my, my arms up high at the same level as the desk, but then also they lower down low enough where they slide underneath my desk. And the kind of cool thing was I built my desk after I knew the height of this, so I knew it was gonna fit. But at any rate, a really nice chair. It is a little bit more of a firm chair, so it kind of holds you in place. Um, it's comfy to sit on. Uh, the nice thing about it is it leans back nice and easy and it'll hold you up in either one of these positions and I believe there's an adjuster under there where you can adjust the amount of force uh, that it takes to push it back. It is adjustable so it lowers down and up just like most office chairs and then there is a built-in lumbar support uh, that you can move up and down that actually does something. Uh, so overall I think this is a, a great bang for your buck chair. Uh, it's got a modern cool look to it that I really like the way that it fits in the office. All right, so finally, probably what you guys more than likely came here to see was the final desk setup. So here it is. Uh, everything's up and running and working, and I've been using it for about a week or two, and I'm really liking the way that this is working out. Um, so on the desk, you can see that it's pretty minimal. There's really not a whole lot there, nothing, uh, not a whole lot of clutter, and that's the way I like to have it. I uh, leave the desk as open as possible so I have as much room to spread out and do whatever I need to do. Uh, on the desk, you can see that I have a pretty large mouse pad, wireless keyboard, and mouse. Um, those are really nothing special, I would say. They're really working well, but they're just stuff that I found on Amazon, and I'll, link, I'll leave them in the links in case you want to see what I'm using. Uh, but really, they're working well, and, and they didn't cost too much. Um, on, either, on either side of the desk, I have a set of Edifier speakers. I was doing a little bit of research on speakers and there was a few different routes we can go, but for the price point, those Edifier speakers are awesome. Um, I'm not a huge audio guy, but I know these speakers sound well, they have really nice bass, and they get really, really loud. Um, so they're working really nice. Uh, the other thing that I like about them a lot is they have a subwoofer out, so if I ever want to add a sub, I can do that, although I don't think I really need to. The other nice thing is they have a remote so that I can control different in inputs. So they have multiple different inputs. So I have the TV coming in on one input and then I have the computer coming in on a different input. So for say if I was watching YouTube or Netflix or something like that, I can listen to that separately than uh, what I was doing on the computer. Then to the monitors. The monitors behind me are the same Acer monitors that I mounted in a previous video. They're 23 inch monitors. They're not the most crazy gaming spec monitors out there but they're pretty good for a budget monitor. They were, they're all 1080p. Um, the story behind it is I had two of them already. I had dual monitors and I really liked them. And when I went to go do my setup here, I wanted to expand to a third monitor and I bought another one of these. I think they're right around $100, $110, something like that. Uh, the only thing that you have to be careful with these is they're non-VESA mounted monitors. So they don't have a VESA mount on them. You have to actually buy an adapter so that you can mount them. I 3D printed mine, and maybe I can make that available at some point, um, but it, it, really, it really wasn't that bad to mount those. Then above those monitors, I definitely wanted a smart TV. Um, I was debating whether I wanted to get a monitor or a TV, but I was really heavily leaning towards a TV because I wanted the smart features of it. Um, so if I was working on something on my computer, I could use the smart features of the TV to watch Netflix, YouTube, uh, whatever cable I wanted to watch, whatever TV show I wanted to watch, 
um, while I was simultaneously doing something on the computer. Now, I do have this hooked up two ways, so I actually do have it hooked up to my computer, where it'll function as a fourth computer monitor, but it's also a standalone TV and smart unit. Uh, the reason that that's really nice is so that I can separate the two and I save computing power on my computer when I'm editing videos and doing heavy CAD models and stuff like that. The other thing is it had to be 4K. I, for whatever reason, I really wanted 4K, so if I was ever editing 4K video, I could pull that up there and see what it looks like since my monitors are only 1080p. Uh, the only problem with this was I wanted it to fit in the space and look proportional. And there is only one 32 inch TV that I could find out there on the market. And that's a Sony Q50 and it's a QLED TV. So the nice thing about it is it's a really high level TV just in a small package. Uh, it shares a lot of the smart features and stuff and the quality of some of the larger, more expensive TVs. Uh, I will admit this TV was not cheap. It was almost $500. So I could have bought like two 55 inch TVs on sale for the same price that I bought this 32 inch TV, which that seems kind of crazy, uh, but it was definitely the right size and the right TV for this spot. A 55 or a 43, I think it would have definitely looked oversized, so the 32 was definitely the way to go on this one. But overall, I'm really enjoying the space. I like the dark accent wall with the lighter walls around it, the lighting where I can manipulate and change everything in here, the, the multiple screens and the TV and the speakers and the lights. Like, I'm really liking the setup so far. Um, it's really good for a productivity setup. I would assume it would be good for a gaming setup potentially, but um, for what I'm using it for, it's working out great. If you like the setup, I would encourage you to give the video a like. If um, you have any questions or comments, you want to know more about what I did, or if you want to give me suggestions on what I should do in the future, because definitely this room's not done. There's a whole other wall and different things that I need to add to this. But I wanted to give you an update right now. If you if you have some ideas for me, leave them down in the comments. I'd love to hear them. Uh, if you like the way that you know that these projects are shaping up, or you want to see what I'm doing in the future, I really encourage you to subscribe and hit the bell notification. Uh, but other than that, I hope to see you guys in another video.